Hello, today is Sunday, February 24th. Um, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is Christine Stitch All The Things. I normally don't record on Sundays um, and I really shouldn't today. I don't have stitching to share today because I didn't stitch last night. But I wanted to address two questions that have popped up a couple of times and I forgot to address in the last video. So consider this Sunday segment old business. Um, the first one is I've been asked a couple times what's happening with the old room, um, the old craft room. Uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but my old sewing room is actually a walled off section of a boat deep garage. Uh, there is an air conditioner out there, um, but it didn't use it a lot in the summer. In the summer, it really was hard to keep up with the heat. Um, so uh, my husband is actually completely um, un disassembled the wooden... Um, uh, shelving unit, raw wood shelving unit we made to store a lot of our stuff. Um, he completely took that apart yesterday. He put the treadmill in there. Um, my big quilting machine is still out there. There's no room for it in here at all. So um, he, that's going to stay out there. Uh, he inherited a bunch of vintage Singer sewing machines, a few featherweights and stuff from a, a sewing machine. Well, from a former co-worker, friend, and someone who was also interested in vintage machines. My husband is out there actually reassembling half of the raw wood shelving unit because this morning he realized that he, um, he actually needs that because all of those sewing machines, all of those parts and things are in a different garage we have we have lots of garages oh, I'm gonna get a little closer to the camera sorry and now that I'm in my chair and I don't really have a table right in front of me I'm gonna be jiggling like it's easy for me to jiggle anyway if you get what I'm saying so I'm a jiggle extra I'm a fidgeter a fidget so I try really hard not to do that and the table this table that I had in front of me before when I recorded kind of helped me from wiggling and jiggling but um, kept my wiggles managed, uh, that ain't happening. So, and my chair, I twist, anyway, I will try to control that. Point being, all of those sewing machines from the other garage, those are gonna be moved into that room because my husband was trying to clean them up, fix them up to sell them locally. Uh, and it just got way too hot out there for him. So essentially now he's moving into the less hot room uh, to work on those machines. So that's what that room is going to be. Um, it's going to be our exercise room because I think I said the treadmill's in there. Um, and he's going to get that set up for him. Possibly bring some workbenches in from, from the main other side of that wall garage part maybe make himself a little workshop in there so that's what's happening with the old room since that question's been asked a couple times you can you can hear Markham um, and then the next question I got was about this table uh, the cranking table I um, uh, I I'm not sure I think I talked about this before but because it's been a while and the question was popped up um, several times and I didn't address it in the room reveal video, the table base was purchased from Amazon. Um, my husband purchased the base and it, it's a manual cranking uh, base from, I think the, the brand name is all capital letters, CO-Z. Uh, but it's no longer available. You can still find this kind of base on Amazon. Someone in the sewing room ideas group said that you could get this. They got theirs at Home Depot. I don't know if they're the same. I do know that my table, um, it, it takes a lot of weight. It's a heavy duty table. So I think like I could put 350 pounds on this thing. The one thing that I noticed that Amazon, a lot of the other tables, um, they they don't have the cross support between the legs mine does um, the other tables will have have the two legs and one cross support at the top but not that middle one and i think that middle one is is really helps firm up your base um what my husband did is he went to home depot or lowe's i think got a piece of oak plywood 
had them cut it down for him to a 30 by 60 inch top and then he got some oak trim put that around it and then he just varnished it he also built the drawer himself uh, because I, I really need a place um, to throw my my smaller rulers my rotary cutters my there's pens marking tools everything's in here um, and I use that drawer all the time so that was the table thing I didn't really talk about because it, it wasn't new I think I've done a video on it before but um, yeah this thing cranks up high y'all I mean it cranks up to I forgot how many inches but it comes up to my chest that's how high I'm like who's gonna use it at that what are you gonna do like are you a giant cutting fabric or cutting anything but and then it it cranks all the way down to desk height but yeah as high as this thing goes it's crazy so anyway, that was old business I wanted to take care of um, today. One, because I have my camera, my thing set up already. Um, and tomorrow I hope to share the um, finish of the Seize the Day part one. I don't know if I can do it because I didn't stitch it all last night. So I hope to get really close because I am working on my shadow line this week. So I will check in with you tomorrow on Monday. And until then, bye. Hello, today is Monday, February 25th. Immediately after I stopped recording yesterday, I realized I did have something stitchy to share with you. Uh, so I'm gonna share it with you today. I didn't stitch last night, I really intended to, and then all of the um, comments that were coming in on my videos uh, sort of overwhelmed me and I decided just to deal with those. Uh, not really deal with it, but answer them because the longer I wait, um, then the longer and more comments I have to respond to later. So I spent all of yesterday evening responding to comments. My husband yesterday walked in. I was super happy to leave this behind. And he walked in and said, I set a few things from the old room on your table for you because you forgot them. I forgot this one on purpose. Do y'all remember the stupid bird clock? I took the battery out yesterday. I looked at him and I said, I do not need a, this clock in here. I don't want a clock. And he said, you need a clock in there so you know when to come out of the room. How about never? I'm never coming out of the room. And I got a little offended by that. And he's like, I'm just kidding. I'm like, listen, I make you all dinner. I know when to leave the room. That clock is going away. Uh, yeah, I took the battery out from the, the bird noises a long time ago. Like, I love the bird noises, but that woodpecker one? Mm-mm. Anyway, um, the one stitchy thing that we were working on and the one thing that he asked me about, um, he and his ex-wife a long, long time ago, uh, he actually did all the work to come up with his... Uh, research and find his family's coat of arms. Uh, so he plotted it all out and he and his ex-wife did a um, um, latch hook rug. And it's been in that room. Now this is the reason my allergies flare, flared up this weekend. He, he lifted it up and he's like, my mom and dad, they hung this uh, above their bed for a really long time, but what do I do with it? Like, I don't wanna lose all this work, but I don't wanna hang this thing up in the house. It's big, y'all. This thing is huge. And I said, no, I totally understand. And I told him, how about if I stitch it for you? And he, he loved that idea. So I flipped it around backwards. I took a bunch of pictures of it because this way I can really see it. And you can see all of the, you can see the squares better. I'm sorry, I think my, my video went a little wonky. So over the weekend, I started, I took my Excel because I love Excel. I made all of the cells the shape of a square and I started filling them in with the color. Now I was filling in the red too, which is the background. I'm hoping that I can find a good red that is the same fabric because I'd rather just stitch this on fabric. Um, I found Wichelt and Zweiger both have a red. I can't remember which one is um, the Christmas red, but that's too orangey red. This is really a nice, uh, deep, it's 816. 
And I found a, I think it was a Garibaldi's, is that how you say that? Fabric that was 814, which is deeper than this. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. If any of you know um, a fabric that's close to 816, please let me know, uh, because I think I'd rather just stitch that on a red fabric for him. Uh, the total size, if I finish this on a uh, 14 count Ada or 28 count even weave, is gonna be eight by 10. And if I stitch all that red, I'm full coverage eight by 10, no. Um, so anyway, I I was working on that. I only got charted, I spent like a couple hours and I only charted up to the head and, and the wings of the, of the eagle or bird, whatever it is there. But anyway, that is some stitchy stuff that I did this weekend. Um, yeah, going to go ahead and the seize the day, the second part came out last night. I can't really show you. Maybe if I show you in reverse, I'm not sure if you can. I can't really see it. You can see my notes on the back. Um, it's a sun and a little bit more sand and an airplane with a, a banner that says seize the day. That's the next part. If there's a picture online of that part stitched, I will, of course, have it up. Uh, but if not, I'm, I, I can't show you this paper because it's the actual pattern. Um, so I'm just going to set that aside for now and I will try to work on that, catching up on the first part this coming weekend um, because I, I'd really like to work on my Chatelaine. And instead of stitching, I opted to catch up on social media posts um, and thanking people for their comments. And I think making sure... Um, you express gratitude is more important than my stitch in time. Um, okay, I think that's it for today. Um, I will address a question. I've had quite a few people ask me if I've done a tutorial on how I fold my fabric on comic book boards or if I will. I haven't done one. I will do one sometime this week or next, maybe over the weekend. Um, and, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and I will share my caveats about choosing to do that with you. Um, let's see, this week I'll be binging Pam and Steph. Y'all, I'm so far behind. I'm in like mid-January of catching up with Pam and Steph. You know you're behind on your floss tube videos when you're behind watching Pam and Steph. Um, so I'm super excited to catch up with them. I was just thrilled to find out about their Netherlands trip. Super excited for them um, and for who, whomever wins the trip and gets to go with them. Oh my gosh. Um, and uh, the one thing I've been wanting to address and I keep forgetting is how I'm handling market. Market this year, um, I didn't have many charts I like last year, but this year seems to be the year of the sampler. And I cannot tell you how excited I am about all of the samplers. Um, I did pre-order only one. The way I was handling market this year was I decided I would allow myself to buy one chart. Uh, and so I pre-ordered one from Kitten Stitcher. It's a savior's praise. Now, before that, the one I had chosen to allow myself to purchase was from uh, Lucy Beam. It was um, it was Maria Cassin, Cashin, uh, 1822, I think. Uh, absolutely love that sampler, and I may end up getting it, but I really um, <clears throat> I really wanted to limit myself to one to help me handle market because these are just coming out, and unless it's a market exclusive. Um, they're going to be around for a little bit. So I really, uh, everything I, I saw, I looked at some of the market exclusive things like uh, from um, Little House Needleworks and thought, I'm, I'm okay, I don't, I, I don't need that chart. But um, as the samplers, there's quite a few that I like. Um, I don't have my list in here, but there were probably five or six that I really, really wanted. But my favorite was A Savior's Praise, and it's The Border. Um, of that one that really got me um, the fruits of the spirit in the border I just I just love all of it the, the way Teresa did the entire border um, and and of course everything in it I just there's so much to love about that sampler so just to let you know how I'm handling it 
I just decided to do one chart and I pre-ordered that one. So that's all I have to talk about today. Um, I will check in with you tomorrow. I let this be kind of a long segment while I mention a few other little extra things from the room and of course what I was doing for Brad uh, with the um, stitching his family's coat of armor. So um, I will just stop here and I'll check in with you tomorrow and we'll see how far I get with Poison Garden. Until then, bye. Hello, today is Wednesday, February 28th. I did not record yesterday because I spent Monday night instead of stitching on my Chatelaine, like I said I would do, uh, I worked on my blog post. Um, and it took me a really long time because I was trying to get pictures done, edited, and talk about my room. Um, so I spent really, I spent like three hours. Probably an hour of that was trying to make an image that looked like a good pinnable Pinterest image. I spent way too much time. So anyway, I did start working on my Chatelaine last night. Um, and just to briefly remind you what it looks like, I gotta make sure I'm holding it right side up. Yeah, not like you're gonna see a lot of detail, but this is the uh, completed Martinez completed computer generated piece. I've been working in this very center and last night you see two dark blue lines right there. I'm working in between. I don't have the outer dark blue done. Uh, I worked on two colors last night if I remember correctly. I posted them earlier on Instagram. One is bluegrass and then the other delphinium. I think um, if that's incorrect, I'll I'll put it up there. I'm I'm not gonna stop and look for it. They're Gloriana silks. These colors, I'm telling y'all, they're so gorgeous. How about instead of talking about it, I just show you, right? Okay, <clears throat> I only had um, only stitched for enough to go around twice. So I started with bluegrass, which is the blue. Uh, that turns to sort of a teal and then an ochre and then back to green teal blue um, Those are more the uh, like 90 degree corners and then the delphinium is the lighter blue uh, That sort of makes the triangles on the around out on the outside. I, I can, Cannot tell you how much I love stitching this um, I just I just don't want to stop but it got late and I, I had to stop. Uh, so I'll be working on that again tonight. Super excited. Um, I'm also recording at a different time of day. Normally I've been trying to record around 10 to 11 in the morning. Uh, but my computer, the, the video card, the graphics card is well known for being washed out and overexposed. And so you can't really tell colors. I'm telling you that because I'd really like your opinion if this afternoon light, let's see, it is 1.30, is, is better, if it makes any difference at all, if, it, if you can't tell anything, um, if it's too bright, if the morning is too blue, whatever, you, you, you know, if, you, if the morning, night, morning light looks better or if the afternoon light looks better or if there's really no difference. Uh, sometimes I won't be able to help when I record, but I actually had lunch and before I got back to sewing I purposefully decided to record later um, had lunch and then uh, put my room back because I actually had the cutting table out where I'm sitting right now so I can do a lot of cutting today um, and then sorry I got distracted by voices out there uh, and I put it all up so that I could try afternoon light so your feedback on that would be greatly appreciated um, yeah Okay, I received in the mail, this kind of looks funky right now, my, a little help from my friends, let's see, a little help from our friends Stitching Circle Club from the Silver Needle in o Oklahoma. I received the package in the mail and I sort of opened it up, but there's one thing I didn't open. I've been waiting to record this uh, so that we could open it up and see it together. Okay, so when I opened the box, the pattern was actually folded all the way over in the box. Not a fan of the folding, but I straightened it out and just kind of set it upright and it seems to have gotten better. 
Look at this tissue paper. Isn't that cute? How springy is that? I just love it. So, yeah, let me show you more of the tissue paper. I don't know why it's a tissue paper thing. We gotta show packaging, right? Okay, so this month, this is every two months, this is the club that I signed up for and I said I was not gonna cancel. There's only two left. Uh, next up is Blackbird Designs. Um, and then after that, Blackbird Designs and then Little House Needleworks. Uh, so I'm super excited to see what the Blackbird Designs kit is. In the meantime, let's talk about this, this month's kit. So it's in the plastic bag. I'm going to take the pattern out. It's called Friendship Garden. I love it. A friend overlooks your broken fence and admires the flowers in your garden. Oh, so cute. Now it comes with the fabric, which is vintage country mocha. I love me some vintage country mocha. Um, <clears throat> let me pull that out. You guys should know what this looks like, right? <clears throat> vintage country mocha. And then the bundles of flosses in here are so pretty. Um, let me see which bundles. They are, did they say? Classic Colorworks hand dye flosses. One has hickory sticks. I think it's this one. Okay, um, or maybe not. Maybe it's this one. Eggshell hickory sticks and weeping willow. Then there's Black Coffee, I think that's this middle one. Dublin Bay Wild Berries, Yield Gold and Brown Hen. And then Tennessee Red Clay, I wanna say that's this one. Tennessee Red Clay, Queen Bee, Stepping Stones, and Roasted Chestnut. Yeah. So um, these colors are just, they're beautiful. Don't you think? I love them. I am excited to stitch these been excited to stitch every single one and I haven't done it yet um of course John James needle I love John James needles but I use petite so I don't use those I end up putting them in other packages for other people I don't think that's a bad thing okay now the cutest thing in this package not well I don't know I think there's going to be two cute things but this one's super cute um in this is Okay, their painting lady, call her painting lady, Bridget, made us little magnetic since six inch rulers to match the chart. I, 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 it's super cute. Look at this. The bunny, the little beehive, the little flowers, the hand painted numbers. I know that was in focus. Oops, and then I made it out of focus. Super, super cute. And here's the chart so you can see that it, it does match. How cute, right? There we go. The picket fence. They call those beehives something else. I don't know much about bees. Donna Ray would know, obviously. Um, so I love this, but instead of, if you notice the pillow is trimmed with Lady Dot Creates trim, and we normally get that in the package, but this time, instead of doing that, she actually, or whoever did this at the, Lindy and the Ladies of the Silver Needle, I think it was Lindy, went to, um, went to the Pioneer Woman in Pahuska? I don't know if I said that right, Oklahoma. And she bought us bud vases instead. Now, I have not taken this out. I don't know what it looks like because I I loved how this was wrapped in this little, like, tissue paper. I don't, I don't know why I didn't want to unwrap it without showing you first. Okay, so I am dying to see what this bud vase looks like. This wrapping, oh, how cute. It's red with white polka dots. You all know how amazing this is gonna look in this room. It's gonna look amazing. Um, I'm not gonna put buds in it because I don't, I don't have flowers or anything around here. 
The only thing that grows around here is weeds, and the only thing blooming out there right now is um, scorpion weed. And if you're a desert person, you know you don't touch that stuff. Imagine like poison oak, but worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I'm going to be setting this up back there for now because it's red with white polka dots. Super cute. So I am super happy with this month's uh, club. And it's going to, the next one should come around May, no, April. Once every two months. So that's what I got in the mail. Um, and then Sarah, my bestie, she actually sent me um, a skein of Into the Darkness. So yay, I have some extra of that for my um, All Souls Veer Landon. So now I won't be worried about running out of running out of that floss. So that's it for today. I will check in with you tomorrow and we'll see how far I got on the Chatelaine, uh, on the Poison Garden Chatelaine. Until then, bye. Hello everyone, today is Thursday, February 28th, last day of the month. Um, I don't have much to talk about today. Uh, I just want to show you the progress I made on my Chatelaine last night. I added three colors around and I'm thinking it looks pretty, pretty great. Um, I was super pleased by the time I was done stitching for that. I actually didn't want to be stitching, but we had to go to bed. So, uh, the, the area around is definitely looks just more like a, uh, you know, the solid line rather than stair step. Um, I added three colors. One, the, um, kind of like a teal peacock blue is a, uh, silk lame braid from, um, petite treasure braids. Or, or I'm sorry, from Rainbow Gallery. It's a silk lame braid and it's just gorgeous. There was a, I think I want to say a thread gatherer silk um, in tapestry green. Just gorgeous, darker green. And then, um, shoot, I forgot the other color. Uh, oh, ivy. A Karen Water Lilies ivy. Uh, so I, I think I made some great progress all in the inside where you see the triangles and stuff in here. Oops, I, I'm not doing well. Um, right in here with the triangles. Uh, those are going to be some eyelets uh, in triangular form. And then there's going to be some beads on the inside. But instead of going straight to the specialty stitches and the beads, I'm going to go ahead and do the stitching around. It's in a dark blue silk. And I think there's another dark blue um, silk lame braid. And I really, I really like stitching with those. So I think I'm going to get the stitching done. Uh, I think there's like two outlines before I work on the beads and specialty stitches and then go to the next round. Um, and in the next round, we're actually going to be working on these corners and there's a whole lot of specialty stitches, back stitching. Um, it's just the pattern. I, I can't wait to put it on there because I, it doesn't ever really show here. But there is so much bling. When I'm wearing my headlamp thing, at my Yachtosun thing, and the light shines, this whole thing sparkles. The silks have a slight, a real subtle sheen sparkle to them. The silk lame braid, I mean the beads. Uh, there's a some petite treasure braid in here still. My husband looks over and goes, wow, every single time. I mean, this Chatelaine is just gorgeous and just the whole thing sparkles he loves seeing this at the end of the night he he likes to see where i am because it's just it just sparkles when i get this frame there's no way i'm putting glass on it i mean i want you to protect it but mm -mm. i'm gonna have to put it somewhere uh where it's in it's not in direct light and keep the glass off because the only way to appreciate this, I think, is with the glass off. I mean, so you can really see it. It's just gorgeous. I'm looking at this wall right here because I'm like, that could be a really nice place because the light doesn't really get over in this corner. But the TV's there. Oh, it's not going to have to compete with the TV. Anyway, that is way in the future. Okay, so that's all I did. It's all I have to check in with you. I will check in with you tomorrow and we'll see how far I get on my Chatelaine tonight. Bye. Hello, today is Friday, March 1st. February is done. February just zoomed by, y'all. It, it was like here and bam, gone. Like somebody put it on fast forward. 
Um, I put up all my March decorations. I don't have any stitching up there yet. I'm working on One Piece, Luck by Lizzie Kate. A Little Luck, I think, by Lizzie Kate. Um, and I actually anticipate that being done before uh, St. Patrick's Day. And I'll talk about that in a bit. I'm going to get right into it. I have a lot to talk about today. I may end up having to edit some of my previous videos. Um, today is actually going to be the last segment in this week's video. Uh, my ex-husband and his wife have had a real tragedy in their family. Uh, we are flying Callie out tomorrow from Las Vegas to Fresno um, so that she can attend a funeral of her eight-year-old bonus nephew. So really, don't drink and drive, y'all. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that is not my story. Um, but yeah, real tragedy in her family, which means um, I've got some travel days in my future, four to be exact, um, up to Vegas and back to um, take her to the airport and then pick her up. And then next Friday, we're driving back to meet her dad so she can stay with him for spring break. Um, she just can't afford to miss an entire week of school. She's going to miss three days next week. Um, and just cannot afford to miss the last two before spring break or I just let her stay. Uh, so because tomorrow we're taking her to the airport, we um, I won't be recording in the morning. As a matter of fact, I'm going to assemble this all, edit it all together tonight and have it hopefully uploaded by tomorrow. Okay, so uh, last night stitching was... Poison Garden. I only did one thing all the way around. It made a huge impact on uh, my progress so far. I was really looking forward to stitching. I thought it was going to be some beautiful silk or silk lame braid. Uh uh. I stitched with 310 last night. Just plain old DMC black. But look at this. It looks amazing. It outlined all of that, right? So it looks fantastic. Now, um, starting tonight, if I have time after I am done editing my video, um, there's a bunch of, um, I mentioned this before, specialty stitches in here, um, beading, but right in between this black and the main stitching part, there is an entire row of Arctic Gold Petite Treasure Braid. And then there's two different colors of another row of Silk Lame Braid in two different colors, like the point I think is a darker color. Sorry, allergies, so my eyes are running today. Um, and then this gold Silk Lame Braid that you can kind of see um, around there, that is also going to be um, in these parts, in the corners, um, and then beads. So uh, when I can, the next thing is to stitch all the petite treasure braid all the way around because uh, that's easy since I've already done the outline. Then I'll be working on the silk lame braids, the two colors, and then be, um, the specialty stitches and then beading. Now I'm going to work on this piece until all of that is done in here. I'm giving this piece one more week. Um, so all of next week. And, and the main reason for that is because I intended to start this one on Sunday. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I think Sunday night I worked on, um, yeah, instead of doing this, I worked on social media posts. Um, instead of on Monday, I'm putting this back behind me. One, it's huge, and two, so you can see it. Uh, and then Monday, I wrote my blog post. So I really didn't start this till Tuesday. Um, and so I've, I've only worked on it a, a few days, right? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, three days. Uh, and I really want to give this piece a good week. Um, and I really like finding a good stopping point before I hit the next, um, you know, go round on this. Um, I keep wanting to call it a mandala. I don't think it is. Maybe Jesse Marie would know. I should message Jessie Marie, but it's like not that important of a question. It's pretty much the same all the way around until you get to the arches and the garden part. Then it's different. Actually, and then there's a, a big row around this of um, Belladonna. And Martina designed it so you could watch the Belladonna as it grew from a bud into uh, a bigger flower. Um, I think that's right how I said that. Anyway. So yeah, one more week on this piece. And then 
we're going to talk about how my stitching is going to change. Um, before we get there, let's see. I I have a couple. I just dropped something. That's why I'm, my focus. I received a couple gifts yesterday. Before we wrap up the month, because that's what this segment's going to be about, I need to talk about the gifts I received yesterday, February 28th. Um, the mail came just after I finished recording yesterday's video, and I put everything away to get ready to start sewing, so I didn't want to get it all back out. Um, from Sarah King, she's on Floss Tube as Sarah King, our Stitching Kingdom. And she messaged me the other day and asked for my address because her local American Legion Auxiliary wanted to send me a Blue Star banner. And so I got this yesterday in the mail. It just is amazing. Um, just to honor Josh and his service and him, you know, you know how this goes. They actually sent me a beautiful folder and it had the paperwork inside. Um, but it's just in appreciation and honor of our um, family members that are serving. Um, and they sent me a whole page on Blue um, Star Banner Facts. Now, um, you're supposed to hang this in your front window of your house. The front window of my house are actually, I don't have one in my living room. All my windows are tinted. You can't even see in the house from, from outside. So I told Sarah that and I asked her, is it okay if I hang it somewhere else, like in my room? And she said, yes, absolutely. So right now, um, my husband and I are gonna find exactly the right place where I wanna hang this. Um, up in here, I have a few spots because my, I didn't put up a lot of pictures or anything. I was saving a lot of wall space for uh, when I got more stitch pieces done and then I figured out where I wanted to hang things. Uh, but this definitely is gonna be hung up um, before the weekend gets here, I just have to find a place. So to Sarah and your, um, this, let's see, this unit is the Dolan Wetzler American Legion Post and Unit 139, I believe out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Thank you so much for thinking of us, for thinking of Josh. It is such an honor to receive this and I truly appreciate um, that you and your auxiliary thought to send this to me um, and, and us for Josh. I, I just can't thank you enough. It means everything. Um, everyone's support means so much. Um, today's Josh's birthday, y'all, for real. I'm just so, ex I'm so excited and proud of him and he's 19. Um, I'm just gonna segue off this to a little bit for his birthday. Um, <clears throat> I sent his birthday presents via Amazon because Amazon is the bomb at getting stuff there quick. It got there yesterday, but his mail doesn't always get delivered timely. So he knows it's there, but here's the thing. There's a mom in the nukes, nuke groups who, my Facebook nuke group, who will deliver stuff to base. So I messaged her earlier this week once I got Josh's schedule for the week and I said, hey, are you able to deliver a birthday cake or cupcakes or anything um, on Friday on his birthday? And she is amazing because she delivers, like whenever us moms need her to deliver anything, she's delivered cars for our kids there, for real. She's amazing. She's like, absolutely. Um, you just go to, she said right now, everyone seems to love the nothing, nothing bunt cakes um bakery and so i went i ordered him like a dozen mini bunt cakes and flavors i know he'll love and she's gonna pick it up today at three o'clock his time and go deliver them and what she does is when she delivers them she sends us a picture so um when i get that picture um hopefully i'll get it tonight before i edit and if so it'll be up um so he actually i messaged him and i said listen I know you don't like to talk on the phone, but you're gonna get either a message or a phone call from a strange number on Friday, Thursday or Friday, and you need to pick it up. I said, one of the moms is going to make a, a delivery on base for me, uh, for you for your birthday. <laughs> and I told him her name and he says, oh, is that the same lady that delivered cupcakes today? I'm like, huh, maybe? And he laughed and I said, oh man, now you know. Cause I just said he was gonna get an in-person delivery. 
and he's like, it doesn't mean I'm still not excited. So yeah, um, I can't wait to get that um, picture of him. And I was still able to get him a cake or mini cakes for his birthday. Um, so yeah, okay, that was Josh. Um, uh, updated you on Kelly and Josh. Um, and, and one's good and one's bad. Um, okay, um, I also received another gift in the mail from Pam. Uh, Pam is PJ Stitcher on Instagram. Now she heard my cry uh, for uh, my plea, my whine um, about the Christmas red color that I was trying to find, that Nancy had dyed Christmas red before, but this color, um, the DMC equivalent, really seemed to be um, 666 rather than probably, I don't know, like maybe 816 even. Um, I mean, it's a, a blue-red for sure. So Pam said, I think I have, I have what you need, um, and it's a smaller skein, but I'll send it to you. And I was like, great, thank you so much. Um, so Pam, I am g actually gonna send you my Tis the Season Red, a skein of that, um, since you sent me this. Um, anyway, she she messaged me that a couple weeks ago. Well, the other day she sends me a message. She's like, I'm really sorry. I, um, I haven't mailed it yet because I was making you a card. And I was like, oh, I love cards. Well, one, I just, one, I love cards, but two, she, she's making me a homemade card. I love those. I used to do card making and scrapbooking, so I know the work that goes into those. Totally appreciate them. So I'm expecting an envelope with a card and a little bit of floss, right? Let me make sure. This shows up on my doorstep yesterday. Mm-hmm. Does that look like a card and a little bit of floss? I open this up. I gotta find the card now. Um, I put a bill in there for some weird reason. Cause you know, I went through all this and opened it up. Um, and she wrote me a letter. I'm sorry for the noise. Y'all, it was like my birthday yesterday, opening this up. Okay, I'll see if I can remember everything. Cause she wrote me a really great note explaining everything. Um, oh, and I sent her a thank you, and I said, I know there's going to be things I forgot to thank you for, um, and I'm looking and I'm seeing them now. Okay, first off, she sends me these. I've never had these before. They're caramel cream, caramel creams, um, and she tells me that they're actually, um, I got to find where it is. Candies are made in Baltimore. Um, <laughs> this is my favorite part. I helped myself to a few. Sorry. Y'all, I don't even know how this package made it in to the package. I ate one of these. It was like I popped a piece of heaven in my mouth. They're like car I never had anything like this before. They're like caramels and that inside right in there. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's like a marshmallow, but it was like just a heavenly bite of a fluffy cloud or something. I don't know. It was amazing. Pam, I don't know why you even gave these up to me but i am eternally grateful i actually had to put that package back up because i just started popping them in my mouth and being like oh these are amazing and it was like if you don't stop eating these one you're gonna weigh 589 pounds by tomorrow and then two you're not gonna have anything to show anybody okay um there was stuff in here and i took it out but look at y'all i now have a stitching post mesh accessory bag and believe this or not, the only thing I left in this bag were the embroidery scissors. I don't, I don't have stork embroidery scissors. I don't. I've always wanted a pair. There's zero reason why I've never bought them. But yeah, now I have the infamous stork embroidery scissors. Super happy about that. Okay, there's so much more here. She sent me a, um, a leather uh, thimble. I can't wait to try this. I have tried all sorts of thimbles. I have never found one that, that fits comfortably on my finger. I have always wanted to try a leather one and just never 
went and bought one because I, you know, I was always disappointed. Like, oh great, this is gonna be another thing that probably isn't gonna work. And it is so soft and pliable. I cannot tell you how excited I am to try this. Um, the times when I really, really need this are when I'm binding quilts. I love to hand bind, but if I don't do it for like long periods of time in between, my fingers just get so incredibly sore. I was looking for my pencil yesterday. I shoved it in the box, in the back. Okay, she sent me, I think these were in the, I, I miss, oh, here's the card. I should start with the, this beautiful card. Said that lady reminded her of me. Hey there, doll face. This is the gold mirrored card. And then she's got this like laser cut black. I almost want to say velvet, but it's not really velvet on it. And then inside, hello, she's got this little martini. Oh man, I wish I had a real one. Um, and this feels like the same stuff as the front. And just, you know, happy stitching, Pam C, the PJ stitcher. And who doesn't want to be the PJ stitcher, right? Stitching in your PJs and then stamped on the back. Handmade by Pam. So this month's cards are going to go up there as soon as I'm done. Okay, she sent me, I'm going to do all this all out of order. Um, fantastic idea. Okay, she sent me these library cards. Pam will love these. These library cards. Okay, absolutely love those. And then she sent me the, the book plates, the sticky, not book plates, you know, the, the envelopes the library cards go into. And they're sticky backs. She suggested putting these on the back of your finished pieces and, uh, and then you write all the data. Now I have had an idea for quite some time um, for, because of my, it's a scrapbooking thing, making a pocket out of clear vinyl and then writing a note and sticking them on the back of my finished pieces. I just haven't done it yet. I, I got a 589 bazillion other projects to do. And so when she sent me these, I'm like, bam, done. I don't even have to go make those clear vinyl pockets now. I got these, which are super clever and I love to read. So this absolutely works perfect for me. I got the things, stick them on. Now I can write all the details, any other pieces. Um, my pieces that are framed by Jill Rensel, the receipts for those are gonna go in the back. Cause you know, if my family sends that stuff to the thrift store or in a garage sale and it sells for $10, I want someone who gets that to understand that I spent $300 on the framing alone. So please take care of this piece. My Jill Rensel receipts are going with those. Y'all better know it. Okay. Um, oh, and then she sent me these amazing thread drops. Love me some thread drops so much. I've said that before. Okay. This is a never ending bag. Um, she sent me trims. Okay. Here's some of them. I'm always loving trims. Okay, always, always, always. Not only that, she sent me these trims like this. Genius idea. I think I've seen this on Pinterest and been like, do people really do that? Yes, people really do this. Sorry for the noise. They're wrapped on bobbin, um, bobbins. Where's the word? English is hard. Uh, Clothes pins. My brain. You know, sometimes I really gotta think about this stuff. And they're all sorts of different fibers. Okay, I got lots. There's rickrack. I gotta set those down. There's more. And she had the genius idea of, um, oh, look at this trim. Look at that trim right there. That white and black, I just can't even. Um, this is a beautiful, it looks like rickrack, but it also looks like a satin stitch. It's just, it's just a beautiful piece of um, trim. A ribbon trim. Uh, you can't even see it. Come on, come on. Where's my paper? I need to use the tools. Yeah, it's a zigzag, but it looks like it's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Okay, um, another gorgeous piece of trim. And, oops, she had the idea so cute, um, of putting all of these in a big glass jar. Now I have a glass jar and I'm going to, how fun is that one? How bright the orange. Um, I'm going to put them in there and see if they fit. If they don't, more rickrack, 
I'm going to Hobby Lobby and I'm going to buy me another glass jar because you know Hobby Lobby has some. I'm going to pull out a couple more at a time. These trims are just my favorite. And that red, white, and blue one, oh yeah. Okay, hang on. There's more, y'all. I know I, I kind of split stuff up here. Yes. Okay. Now, I did actually get my... Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm just dropping everything. I did get my jar and I emptied it from all those red glitter balls and then wiped out all the extra glitter. And so I'm just going to put these in here right now and see if they fit. And so far it looks like they do. And how cute is this? I may have to rearrange because I'm not a good decorator. Uh, hello glare. Oh, there we go. So yeah, I'm going to stick this up there when I'm done. Fantastic idea. Thank you so much, Pam. Okay. That's not it. Seriously. I was like opening and opening and opening. Okay. She said that she found some great, a great, really fancy pair of pants at the, I think the thrift shop and she cut them up um, because the fabric is perfect for like backing things. And this is the lining of the fabric and it really is nice sort of, um, rayon silky sort of feel and stuff i know i totally rayon and silk are not the same thing and then a piece of velvet so yeah i'm definitely going to be using that to back up some back some smalls and then i had it everywhere so i got lint all over it while i was taking everything out so thank you for that that's a fantastic idea okay this little thing i opened this up and i'm like what is this? Is this lipstick? I don't know. If you know what this is, I just squealed. Okay, you take off the cap and you twist it up. Y'all, it's a needle holder. It's a needle case. It looks like lipstick. My husband was like, that is so clever. I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing. Yeah. Totally putting that in my purse. You know how many times you hear of women posting on Stitch Mania or whatever and saying, I brought everything with me, but I forgot my needles. I'm never going to forget a needle. Ever. Okay. I think I'm down to the last couple things. I did show you that she sent me the floss, right? Yeah, she sent me the floss. That was one of the things in her card. She said um, she got the whole package together and almost forgot to add the floss. That's the only reason for this. Okay. Then she sent me this House of Mang needle minder and I squealed out loud. Like everything I kept squealing out loud. Look at that pirate girl. There we go. She is so adorable. <sighs> I love her. Love her so much. And then I think I got, I think I covered everything. I'm telling you, it was like Christmas yesterday, my birthday, Christmas, all in one. She said that she got some of this trim and she shared it with me. So she kept half for herself and gave me half. I don't even know why she would share half this with me because I wouldn't want to share this with anyone. Is tulip pink trims, y'all. These ribbons are amazing. I don't have any tulip pink trim. And I've always wanted to get some, but just haven't done it. And I, these are amazing. Amazing. This is from the chipper line, this one. I actually have a bag I'm going to be making in the next few days or in the next week or so to sell that has the little chipper dude in this colorway. Um, so Pam, thank you so much. This package went on and on and on y'all. Everything was amazing. And now I'm going to eat all those heavenly caramels. Caramels on a cloud is what I'm going to call those things. Okay. This video is already 25 minutes for today and I have to wrap up this month. We have to go over my year end, uh, year end, my month end, how I did from Stitch from Stash. I started the month with a $10.35 balance forward. My budget for February is $25, so I started the month essentially with $35.35. .35. 
I bought stuff yesterday. Couldn't have waited a day. I fell off the wagon a bit. We're going to talk about that and how if you do the same thing, I don't want you to get discouraged, is easy to get back up on the wagon. Okay, I said that I had determined I was going to spend money to buy one chart, I said earlier this week, from Market, and I did. I prepaid for it with Gulf Coast Stitches, absolutely love Julie. Um, she did a bunch of pre-orders in her shop, she's amazing. If there's anything you ever need, you need to message Julie, she's amazing. I bought A Savior's Praise by Shakespeare's, Beth Shakespeare's, oh my gosh, why can't, Shakes, I can't say, Shakespeare's Peddler, <laughs> Teresa Kitten Stitcher, I shouldn't just say that, I don't know why I was having trouble with that, it was $23, that includes the shipping, I think it's $19 for the chart, um, and then, but I'm, you don't have to include the shipping when you do stitch from stash, I do, it's actual money spent, so. $23, all right? Okay, so yesterday, and I've talked about this a bit, um, be right back. The thing that fell over is Flowers of the Holy Night, my project bag with the chart. I've been talking about this. Um, Jen and I, uh, Spoon and Rooney Stitcher, are probably gonna start this soon, I would imagine. Now, I had determined that I was actually going to try and use Victorian Motto Sampler Threads um, conversion and um even with she, pam what she sent me was her christmas red to help give me an extra four yards of the christmas red that i needed now i have actually seen the silks for this uh for this project and i'm telling you it the dmc conversion doesn't match well um and the victorian motto sampler flosses that i tried really really hard I even used some color and cotton flosses. They just did not match right. So yesterday, as hard as I did to put this all together, and thank you so much, Pam, for your package and your floss, I decided to go with the silks and go ahead and buy them because I know what they look like. And the flosses, they just, they're not the same. And this project really deserves the silks in my mind. So I went ahead and I ordered all 18 dinky dye silks from Lil Thread Shop on eBay. Now I message Margaret, I don't buy them through eBay because that it, it's extra cost because of eBay fees and all that. So all I do is message Margaret. Now dinky dyes are going for $4.50 right now on 123stitch. Margaret is selling them for three. So I went ahead and I ordered them. So that charge yesterday was $57.50. Now, Lori, Mischievous Stitches, and someone else on um, Instagram posted a sampler Lori's working on. I can't remember the name right now. It's a beautiful sampler. Beautiful sampler. And this person said, hey, this was in the sampler and um, needlework, no, sampler and antique needlework quarterly spring 2011 issue. So I ran to my computer because I know that I have, when they were ending that, um, they added it to our Just Cross Stitch library digital copies um, the last year that they were going to end it. They let us have the last couple of years. So I was like, please, please let me have had that. And I didn't have that one. I think all my issues start in 2013 or 2014. And so I, I went to where you could get it digitally. That issue was $6.99. And so I thought, okay, you've actually wanted the CD for this for a long time, for the into all the years, 1995 or 1991 to 2015. Go look and see how much that CD is versus buying a single issue. Okay, Amazon had it for like $49.99. And I was like, no, I cannot do that. And then I looked around on eBay and then went back to Amazon and saw that somebody had it for like $34.00. Uh, one of those used bookstore sellers um, in like new, never opened, but not used condition. Sorry, allergies, y'all. And I thought, get it. And so I did. And then I remembered yesterday was the last day of the month. And I had to total up my stitch from stash purchases and finishes. 
This is how it happens for me, y'all, where I'm just like, yes, do this, do it right now, not a problem. Okay, so I fell off. So let's, let me tell you where I am. And if you have fallen off and you feel like you're in the hole, I want you to know, easy to get back out of. I messaged my accountability partner, uh, Carrie, of carrying stitches she didn't know she was my accountability like I had officially given her that title <laughs> she messaged me I like that title um and I just told her what I had done because she and I have been messaging back and forth with how we're doing she's really helped keep me on track and then I just in one day blew it on two things all right so when I started the month $35.35 my flowers of the holy night floss was $57.50 my uh the cd i just started was 3706 and the savior's praise was 23 dollars. so my total purchases for the month were 117 dollars and 56 cents no finishes that left me with a negative 82 dollar and 21 cent balance i was mildly freaking out and then i sat down and carrie i told carrie i wanted to start working on a different project and i could get that counted as a finish and she said that was a great plan um so i'm going to tell you my plan for how to get out of a hole because if you fall off the the stitch from stash wagon if you, and you've got like a negative 82 dollars balance it feels really overwhelming like you just want to give up and say forget it if you're feeling that way if this has happened to you don't we're going to do this together we're going to climb back up on that wagon so here's my plan for the month. I wrote it all down. Uh, after the Chatelaine rotation this coming week, I am taking back out Things Unseen and I'm gonna finish it. I'm on the last clue. I think one week, possibly two at the most, maybe like a week and a half, maybe one full Sunday day stitching, I'll have this finished. Um, and then plus size stitcher will be so happy because I'm gonna be mailing this pattern off to her. I looked this up. This finish is a $25 credit. So that's $82.21 in the whole start off March. I automatically get a $25 credit. A $25 credit for finishing this, that's 50 bucks in March. That leaves me with a negative $32.21 balance. But remember I said I've got like four heavy travel days, eight hours on the road each day, what, well, six? six and a half or maybe seven to Vegas. Anyway, I am determined to finish this clue on Seize the Day and then the second clue. Uh, I calculated that. I'm asking Stephanie, Miss Oso oh Crafty. I left her a comment in the Facebook group to ask her how much to confirm what the individual um, finishes are. I think it's gonna be like either 277 or 278 per finish. And so um, with two of those, that puts my oh, freaking allergies. <clears throat> with two of those, that puts my total now at negative $26.67 by the end of March. But I think that I, in those travel days, I will actually be finished with that because I'm not far from finishing that first clue. I'm going to be working on luck. I don't think it's going to take long to finish him. If I finish him, that is another $5 finish this month. And that puts my new total at negative $21.67 by the end of March. And that means in April, when I get my $25 credit for the month, I am now $3.33 back to the good. So, and even if I didn't get back to the good by April, it's still one big finish a couple months worth of credit and i'll be back okay i mean i don't really have any desire to be purchasing a bunch of things it just happened to this is what happens with me i get this you know what i've decided i'm going to do it and so i just do it i really should have put down the sampler and that needlework quarterly in my stitchy wish list jar and thought on that for a while um i didn't I had been thinking on Flowers of the Holy Night for a while, floss pack, and then finally made the decision yesterday because that start is going to be happening, I think, probably soon. I need to get with Jen and see when she wants to start that. Um, so that one needed to happen, but the other one didn't have to be as urgent as I made it in my mind and the, the 
high of buying something. And like Carrie said in her message to me, I've got three packages coming now. Um, I didn't fall into the hole so bad, like hundreds of dollars like I did last year. So I should be okay. It will feel good to get some of these packages in and I can get back into my routine. So if any of you are struggling like me or had a tripped up moment, um, cause we knew that was going to happen, right? I'm surprised I made it from September to here without messing up as bad as this. I think my last trip up was like a $6 book. So I'm pleased that it's, I've made it this long and this far and got to this point and have a plan to get out. So I just wanted to share that with you. I'm really sorry for this segment being so long, um, but I really did want to wrap up the month. I wanted to explain what happened in case anyone else is on this journey, struggling with their spending, kind of messed up too. I don't want you to give up. Uh, we just have to brush ourselves off, forgive yourself because life happens, stuff happens, we make decisions, and now don't feel guilty about it because I don't. You just have to acknowledge what happened and then move forward and either decide not to do it again or decide to and, and own your decision. I totally own my decisions. Um, I don't feel guilty, terrible, bad. I have a plan for... Um, making this right for me and that's a good thing and I, I hope that this encourages you if you're struggling um, and yeah I just need to share my journey with you and how I'm handling that okay so I am going to end this video um, here thank goodness there's no Saturday segment this one is 38 minutes long um, I hope you all have a great weekend hug your loved ones hug your friends tell them you love them take a moment um, let people know how you feel and that you appreciate them, especially the little ones, you know? All right, with that, don't forget to stitch all the things. Thank you so much for joining me, for watching my videos, for liking, subscribing, commenting, whichever you do. I appreciate all of it, um, and I wish you a happy day. Bye.